Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to the first episode of the Mad Eye Games YouTube channel. This first episode is going to be a brief introduction of the game we're playing, and then you will not see me until the very end of the series. Today's video is going to be The Call of Cthulhu. Now, The Call of Cthulhu was actually a book written by H.P. Lovecraft, who is famous for his science fiction and horror stories, and it was written in 1926 and then published in 1928 as a part of this pulp magazine of weird tales. So in The Call of Cthulhu, the game that we're playing tonight, we are going to be playing as a detective who has been sent to this island to investigate the disappearance and potential murder of this family. We're not sure if it's murder yet, but we are sent over there to find out. And while we're investigating, strange things begin to happen. So I hope you guys will enjoy the series. I've already recorded several episodes as of this recording. And if you are interested in The Call of Cthulhu and other games that borrow from this like Cthulhu mythology, I recommend checking out The Darkest Dungeon, The Sinking City, and Sherlock Holmes The Awakened. Oh, and if you're interested in films related to The Call of Cthulhu mythology, check out The Color Out of Space, uh, the documentary Lovecraft, Fear of the Unknown, and there's also a comedy horror, which I've never seen before, but it's on Amazon Prime if you're interested. That's called The Last Lovecraft, The Relic of Cthulhu. So I'm probably going to watch that at some point and talk about that during the Let's Play. But this Let's Play or playthrough is going to be dedicated to the story and just experiencing the game. And so the discussion question for this video while you guys are watching is what is your favorite part of Cthulhu mythology? You know, what got you into Cthulhu mythology? And if you have not gotten into Cthulhu mythology and this is your first experience with it, please tell me in the comments below. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And also, there's this really cool song. I don't know, it, it very it has a very cultish feeling to it, which is pretty cool. So I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. And so yeah, I hope you guys will enjoy the first episode of The Call of Cthulhu and many more to come. So let's get started. Pierce Investigations Agency, Boston, Chapter 1. Boston 1924, Edward Pierce, veteran of the First World War, drowns his memories in liquor and sleeping pills. He is now a private detective who has trouble finding a case, able to lift him from his t torpor. Pierce must find a new case quickly or risk losing his license. Okay, so I'm playing Edward Pierce. It's 1920s. And I am a detective who is down on his luck. So I wonder how this is going to play into Cthulhu. I don't know, maybe being sent to investigate him or something. If I am mad, it is mercy. May the gods pity the man who in his callousness can remain sane to the hideous end. H.P. Lovecraft, sane, hideous end. Whoa. Um, okay. My guy's freaking out right now. Oh, this has got to be traumatizing for him. I mean, imagine waking up into like a pit of entrails and other things. Game is saved. Okay. Looks like we're getting right into it. Alright, to move, use L, okay. I am moving. I gotta say, this reminds me of Pinocchio. You know, the whale when he swallowed Pinocchio, but... Inside the whale we've got, you know, barred doors, creepy lighting, and a lot of fog. I mean, that's the only reason why I can think of you know, all these, like, animal bits inside, but based upon the design and, like, the layout of this area, this looks man-made. Not, like, the inside of a whale. Feels like a cave. Alright, talk, press B. Okay. Can I go through here? Yes, I can. Alright, we're good. I see a lantern. I hope this ambience isn't too loud for you guys. Ooh. Counter darkness. You must light up some items in order to interact with them. Okay. So let's pick up this torch light right here. When an object can be picked up, press A. Right. We got a hurricane lamp. Pretty good lighting.
We got some crates here. Ooh. Okay. That was a monster. I don't know what kind of monster, but I don't want to find out. We got some bolt cutters. Let's cut open a door. I'm assuming this is locked. It is. And let's get out of here before a whale decides to eat us. I don't think that's the voice of Cthulhu. Yeah, there's definitely a human presence in here because we got candle lights, crates. This feels like a cavern and we've stumbled upon something crazy here. What a putrid offering. Offering. I wonder if this is some sort of sacrificial chamber. Yeah, there's the night sky. Okay. So we are not in the belly of any sort of beast. Oh man, listen to that fly ambience. That's really good sounds. Okay. So this was a sacrifice that did not... Don't fight. You have been oh, I'm gonna run. One thing I've learned about games is that if it tells you to run, you run. You do not want to stick around. Behold. Everything has already been written. But perhaps you will attempt to change your destiny. Just a nightmare. We're okay. I hate whiskey. Oof. Dude, we gotta stop drinking. <laughs> if that's what whiskey does to us, we need to stop drinking. Alright, Pearson Investigation Agency, check journal. Let's see what's up. Alright, so we have a couple of tabs here. I want to read through these. October 20th, 1924. The doctor can well repeat to me that I no longer need my remedy to keep my memories at bay, but I know that if I stop, the memories will return. One of these mornings, I probably won't wake up. Despite the treatment, I again hear voices in my dreams, but they are different, unknown. They seem to surface from unfathomable and ancient depths. What nameless creature is calling me? Pierce. Oh, so this is like a skill tree. Okay. Um, I don't have any points to spend, but it looks like I'm sort of strong. Investigator. Psychology. Spot hidden. We have medicine, and we have occultism. So, interesting note. The medicine and occult skills can only be improved by objects discovered in the environment. Huh. Interesting, okay. No place on dark water yet. I do have this. Pierce Investigations Agency, my private detective agency, contracted to the Wentworth Detective Agency. After the Great War, I decided to set up in Boston where there is no lack of work for guys like me. One small-time case follows the other. Adultery, settled scores, disappearances that are not actually disappearances. All right, so I'm guessing cats going up trees. The old office couch is less comfortable than a re bed, and I should probably get rid of these empty bottles, but this place is mine for the moment, until I get kicked out. Clues, inventory. Lighter, my old lighter that I engraved in memory of the 77th Infantry Division and the men of the Lost Battalion who fell. Oh, I can inspect items too, can I rotate? Yes, I can. All right, so I can rotate items. And that seems to be all I got. Oh, wait, I missed sanity, okay. That's why it was still being uh, highlighted with an exclamation point. Mental trauma. Edward Pierce is a veteran of the First World War where he took part in the Meuse-Argonne Offensive. Use Argonne Offensive. I hope I'm saying that right. He's one of the few survivors of the Lost Battalion American units that suffered heavy losses from enemy and allied artillery fire. 
forced to hold their position for several days surrounded by the bodies of their fallen comrades without food or medical supplies. The soldiers were considered as lost by their fellow countrymen. Pierce is traumatized by these events. He consumes sleeping pills and liquor to ward off the nightmares that haunt him. Sanity. Stable. Confident in your abilities and your Cartesian mind. I hope I'm saying that right. You conduct your investigation by sticking to the facts, your convictions, and your perception of reality. Your conclusions are logical and reliable. Okay. So I wonder if that dream we had where we were surrounded by like whales and like entrails and whatnot was sort of a flashback in a way of the Lost Battalion, which I'm assuming is this right here. The Lost Battalion. Yeah. Holding your position and obeying orders. That is courage. And that would explain why there was this random figure dressed up in a war uniform that got killed by what it seemed to be a member of Cthulhu's army. I'm just guessing, because I saw the tentacle. And you know, tentacles, Cthulhu. Married woman runs off with her girlfriend. The husband couldn't understand it. The husband never understood his wife. Had left him. He kept on calling me weeks after the investigation had been closed. Ooh, okay. Anything for me inside here? No? Okay. Item case closed. I have business here. To okay. To. Very cool calendar. The Wentworth Agency doesn't attract top-notch cases. Alright, so I'm sort of a B-tier detective. That's okay, we gotta start somewhere. Um, can't pick up anything there. I used to be an avid reader. Hey, reading's good for the soul. An hour a day. It helps. Been too long since I've slept in a bed. Oh man, we gotta get you a bed. I wonder why I still take these things. Sleeping pills. The doctors prescribed them when I returned from the war. They swore they would put an end to the nightmares, but for a while now, their effect has been wearing off. Okay, so I built uh, some immunity to it. Oh, I get to keep it with me. Alright, I might need them in my adventure. Um. Have a drink or don't drink? Um, you know, I don't really drink in real life, so I'm gonna follow what I would do and not drink. So, we're gonna pass on that. Hey, see a red book been a while here. Well, since I jotted down something other than my nightmares. Personal journal. All right, my inventory slot is highlighted. Knowledge. Is that it? Yeah, case closed. Yeah, that, I thought I picked something up though. I picked up a red book. What? Okay, maybe I'm not supposed to register that? I don't know. I like the tunes we're playing. Let's keep those rolling. Ooh, look at this board. This is nice. I've been all over the place. Charles River. Oh, wow! This is an old map of Boston. Hey, I bet this is accurate. I want to say this is accurate and they've put this in the game. And it wouldn't surprise me if they got photographs of the 1920s and actually, you know, figured out where they were taken. That is so cool. I should get rid of all this stuff. No, keep it. This is, these are memories. I want to keep those. Natural sciences, linguistics, archaeology. All right, and did I open this up? No, oh, wait. A good old story of blackmail and a speakeasy. Speakeasy. I don't know what that means. The bar owner who hired me didn't like the way I closed the case, but when you're already outside the law, there's not a lot one can do against a private detective who's got proof against you. Oh, so this was a disgruntled client. And it looks like I got everything. Um... Can I leave? I can't go there. Uh, I already opened that up and dealt with that. I used to be an avid reader. Yeah, can I leave? I have business here to attend to. No. Looking around. Um, I don't think I need to drink the liquor because it gave me the option to drink or not to drink. The radio. Let's turn this off. Okay. Game saves. Alright, so it was the radio I had to turn off. Oh. 
We got business to attend to. Here we go. I'm listening. Are you Edward Pierce? Private investigator contracted by the Wentworth Detective Agency? That's correct. Hello, Mr. Pierce. I'm Lucy Sheriffield, in charge of investigators over at Wentworth. I'm calling because of a problem with your file. A fire has destroyed some of our documents. Is that right? I'm so very sorry, but I have to collect your personal information yet again. Allocate your character points. Each character point allows you to improve the score of a skill. Okay. Hey, I've got eight character points. All right, so now we can actually make some progress here. Interesting. So I got strength, eloquence, investigation, spot hidden, psychology, occultism. Hmm. The yellow seems to be... I'm only allowed to upgrade these if I find things throughout the level. So let's see what each one says. Eloquence. Eloquence represents your ability to influence those you talk to by your power of speech. Okay. So I can manipulate discussions, investigation, my investigation talents. I'm at professional level, so there's five tiers. Past events by a crime scene or an object and picking locks. That's good. Occultism. Presents your knowledge of the occult sciences. Bring the skill increases the chance of determining the use and origin of occult artifacts and of expressing your knowledge of the myth. Medicine. Medicine represents your medical knowledge. Improving the skill increases your chances of determining the dosage of a drug, of making a diagnosis, or of expressing your understanding of a medical problem. Huh. Okay. Psychology. So like represents your knowledge of human behavior. Improving the skill increases your chances of understanding the motivations of a person. That's sometimes important. Spot hidden. Represents your ability to find hidden objects. Improving the skill increases your chances of finding hidden objects. An undiscovered object will not appear in game. Oh. Hmm. Okay. I can reset too. So let's see. If I hit level three, how many do I have to? Six. All right, so I can get to level four if I want to. They'd be expert in finding things. Let's reset. Why does I put in a cult? Be a professional occultist. That'd be pretty cool. Medicine. Professional. Two points left. Ooh, so I could be professional spot finder and a professional medic. Hmm. If I put everything into a cult, then I'd be a professional occultist. Hmm. That is tough. <sighs> decisions, decisions. My guess is I will find other ways to improve the skills, but I can only improve medicine and occultism by finding stuff in the game, and I don't know how often I'm going to find stuff. Huh. Medical problems, occultism, spot hidden. I, I kind of want to put... Hmm... Let's balance it out with occultism and medicine. Alright, so I could be professional medic, professional occultism. It's pretty good. You know, I'm gonna go with more occultism because I also wrote. Oh, shoot. Do I not? Oh, let's reset that. Let's go with the occult, because fun fact, I actually wrote a master's thesis on occultism in graduate school. So I'd like to do that. Let's just see what happens if I go all into occult. Let's validate. Thank you for this information, Mr. Pierce. Our files will still be up to date. Great. And on a related matter, may I raise a sensitive question? What's wrong? As you know, we wish to closely monitor the progress of our contractors. And it would seem you've been accepting fewer new cases. 
Work is scarce. Mr. Pierce, you know as well as I do, there's never been more investigative work than now. But are those cases worth it? They're worth not losing your license. Show yourself worthy of the Wentworth Detective Agency, and we might keep you on the payroll. Mr. Pierce, are you still... I'm coming. Sir, I came here on the advice of a person whom I hold in high esteem, and I must say that I expected anything but a drunkard's lair. You're free to leave any time, sir. Do you know to whom you speak? Stephen Webster, industrialist and art collector. <laughs> All of Boston knows you. Tell me, Mr. Pierce, are you capable of handling a new case, or are you simply a deadbeat inebriate? If you come to me, it means you're desperate. Nobody believes me. They take me for an old fool. Sarah, my little girl, she is dead. Even you must know of her. She was Sarah Hawkins. The painter? Yes, everyone knows her work. The police accuse her of killing her family. They all died in a fire. Sarah, her husband, and Simon, my grandson. I can't do anything for a woman who was already dead. Find out the truth. They say she was mad, but I know that's a lie. She would never have done such a thing. But if you have no proof... I've brought all that I have. Look. I want you to look carefully at this painting. Tell me all the assumptions that come to mind. What am I supposed to find? Tell me... Tell me if this is the work of madness. Or if, on the contrary, you manage to detect some logic, a rationality to follow so that I may understand it. Is that all you want from me? Yes. Please. All right. I'll look at your picture. That's all you've got? The painting? I placed a file on your desk. It contains everything I have on the affair. All right, so in review, we've got a new client named Stephen Webster. His daughter Sarah is missing, and he's given us this painting. So we have examined the painting, examined the Hawkins file on my desk. So let's check out this painting first. Before I click anything, I see two people cowering in fear. I'm assuming that's Sarah protecting a young boy or her husband or something from this monster that looks like it's an ink monster, has a symbol in the center. He doesn't have any tentacles, but he sort of reminds me of the hooded figure who stabbed us in, he didn't really stab us, he stabbed the Civil War, or the World War One soldier in our dream, and they attacked us. But let's see what this has to say. Its strange beauty isn't enough to hide the feeling of dread it carries. It's a feeling of dread, okay. A feeling of dread. Let's look at the file. A warehouse on Darkwater. Some sketches of the Hawkins family. Rather thin. Yeah, so if you look at the painting, if you were to re rewind this video, guys, and you were to look at the painting and the f photographs we have here, that's clearly in the painting Sarah Hawkins and her son, I believe. L let's see if he has a name. A shipping label, some of it is unreadable, but I can make out part of the address. Warehouse 36, Darkwater, the police report. It says that the fire started in the dining room and claimed the whole family. The police decide on a domestic accident, but they, nevertheless, insist on Sarah Hawkins' mental frailty. Why? A press cutting. An article written about the marriage of Sarah and Charles Hawkins, a businessman from the island of Darkwater. They live a recluse life there with their only son, Simon. Alright, so Simon and Sarah were painted, and something was chasing them in that painting. So, Mr. Pierce, what do you make of these elements? All right, so now I can make some choices. Um, 
Oh, and it tells me what skill set matches with each choice I make. That's good. Something's not right with the story, though. It is a little weird. Um, it's not right in that the police was saying, oh yeah, she's sort of mentally off. And then you've got a painting that shows her and her son Simon getting attacked before they disappeared in the fire. So th that is a little odd. Her husband was a big deal on the island. But the police are sticking to the accident theory. Though they mentioned Sarah's mental state was fragile. I believe you are right, sir. This case is not as simple as it appears. I am aware of that. I believe there is more to this case than just an accident. Right, oh, I can choose all of the options. All right, this is nice. I read about her mental uh, fragility in the police report. You must tell me if what the police suggest about the mental state of your daughter is true. No. Sarah had visions. Everyone knew that. She never would have heard a fly. She only thought she saw things. Saw things? What do you mean by that? I never knew what she meant by that. My daughter was an enigmatic figure, Mr. Pierce. You must find out the truth about her life and death. All right, so I'm taking she saw things maybe in visions or dreams, and she would paint them. Well, Sarah Hawkins lives in Darkwater, so you know that. But what's Warehouse 36? The sender's label mentions Warehouse 36. That's right. It came with Sarah's last painting. And you think your daughter could have been the sender? That is what you must find out. Go to Darkwater. Find Warehouse 36. Well, I don't think we have to tell him off, because we're the only option he has left. I'd say that's all the information I need. I think I'm beginning to understand. I'm willing to do anything for my daughter to recover her honor. Quiet down. I'm on your side. That's a little rude. Let's sum things up. An artist dies with her family in a house fire. Your only clue is a sort of promontory painting sent from dark water right before her death. Correct. And the rumors about her supposed folly. Which you don't totally deny. Find that warehouse. Find out the truth regarding Sarah Hawkins' death. You'll be handsomely compensated. All right, I'll take the case. I'll go to Darkwater and look into the death of your daughter. Thank you, Mr. Pierce. I didn't expect any less coming from a man in your situation. Something's queer, but it's not like I have a choice. We always have a choice, but... Darkwater. I think I've got a book on the North Atlantic. I'll no doubt find some information on this island in there. All right, so we now have some options. Leave for dark water, find out about dark water. It also said check my inventory. Yeah, some things are highlighted. Let's see what we got here. We have some new people. When oh, they show the age too, okay. So if they're grayed out, that means they're deceased. Only son of Sarah and Charles Hawkins, name is Simon. He died in the fire that claimed his whole family. Sarah Hawkins. Occupation painter, age 33. Sarah Hawkins, a painter known for her tortured artistic universe. She was worshipped for the strangeness of her work and the rarity of her public appearances. I seem to remember that she once said, I paint what my dreams whisper to me. Aha, so that was a dream she painted. Her marriage to Charles Hawkins years ago surprised high society columnists. A wealthy Boston Harris, known for her party going, chooses to follow her new husband and live as a recluse on the island of Darkwater. She disappeared from the front pages of newspapers, and nobody heard any more about her. Even her death in a fire remained a secret. Only her father, Stephen Webster, continued to seek the truth. Charles Hawkins, ship owner, age 41. Charles Hawkins was a local celebrity on Darkwater. The heir of a ship owner family, he used to travel a lot. He met Sarah Hawkins during a trip in Paris. They fell in love, got married, and Hawkins took her to the remote island of Darkwater. They had a son named Simon and lived a very secretive life. All right, so they just wanted to escape the private eye. Nothing wrong with that. Stephen Webster, age 63, businessman. A wealthy businessman, well-respected in the Boston area. Stephen Webster came to see me in order that I investigate the death of his only daughter, Sarah Hawkins. The man accepts neither refusals nor inconvenient truths. He is ready to do anything to prove that his daughter was not mad. All right. The occult. 
Aha! The art of Sarah Hawkins. Intuitive and visionary artist for some, overpriced imposter for others. Sarah Hawkins leaves nobody indifferent. This mysterious and reserved painter offers strange images with violent colors and wild strokes to the world. If her paintings are testimony to her vision of the world, then the world of Sarah Hawkins is a portal open to other dimensions. Extract from the notebook of Edward Pierce, Private Detective. Clues. Paint picks. Oh! So I can look back at it. Oh, I can always inspect it. That's good. Okay. Is there anything on the back? You know, I wonder if I start upgrading the spot hidden category. If I start looking at these objects, will I see other things too? Combine occultism with spot hidden. So I'll try that. And I'll upgrade my tasks one at, or I will upgrade my skill sets one at a time. All right, found the Hawkins case. Yep. Saw these already. Okay, nothing new there. Inventory. And that's, oh, knowledge. And that's pretty much it. Okay. So leave for dark water, find out about dark water. Let's let's do some research. Natural sciences, linguistics, archaeology. Dark water is off the coast of Boston. Aha. Uh -huh. But I've never heard of it. According to this book, it was often mentioned during whale hunting times at the end of the 19th century. But it seems to have been shunned since then. All right, Darkwater Island has been inhabited since the 14th century and is still rich with the many memories left behind by its lost tribes. But don't let the romanticism of these moving evidences of such naive and primitive beliefs fool you in forgetting how violent their gods were. A gigantic creature still ornates the walls of long abandoned caves. Was it a sea or a dream god? No one knows. But today's inhabitants, the sons and daughters of the proud whale hunters, still remember the mysterious and tumultuous story of their small island off the coast of Massachusetts. Okay. All I have to do is go to the port. I just hope that I can find a boat able to take me to dark water. What's this? I used to be an avid reader. Yeah, something here. A dense work. Wait, the learning of medicine. Dense work came to interns and young practitioners. This first volume lists all the illnesses known in the civilized world. It details the symptoms and suitable treatment. Oh. Medicine progression. Did I upgrade? Yes, I did. I got a point. Okay. One more and I get to the next rank. Great. I believe that is all. Uh, got all that stuff there. All these things I've already done. I'm not going to drink. Already checked you out. I opened the file there already. Yep. Close my files. Leave my desk in an orderly fashion. I will take my hat and go. I used to be an avid reader. Yep. Nothing new there. All right. Let's go, guys. To Darkwater. Ooh, and I gained one character point. 